Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news for the week ending the 5th of May 2019. Today, looking at the RSI newsletter, the free flight event, Alpha 3.5 hotfixes, Quadrant 42 and Persistent Universe roadmap updates, as well as highlights of the official Cloud Imperium shows inside Star Citizen and Star Citizen Live. Let's start with the blurb from the newsletter. On Wednesday, we kicked off a free flight event inviting everyone to get into Star Citizen and explore Alpha 3.5 with five curated ships for free until the 8th of May. Also this week, we take a trip down memory lane to revisit a controversial moment in UEE politics. Subscribers bring the party and pain in the Anvil Valkyrie. Star Citizen Live gets Pappy, Voip goes karaoke, and Inside Star Citizen looks at how we collect player feedback and how it influences features like the new flight experience. I'll put links to all of that and the full week's news in full detail down below. As always, I focus more on the tangible game stuff uh, and sort of like roadmaps and updates and things like that. But there's a cool sort of like karaoke piece that people have done with FOIP and in law UEE politics stuff there as well, if you want to check it out. Star Citizen's free fly event is going on until the 8th of May, enabling you to try the game entirely for free. Players that already have access to the game, though, also benefit during this time as all players will get access to the Cutlass Black, Prospector, Avenger Titan, Arrow, and Dragonfly. You just have to follow the links down below if you want to uh, get involved with those free ships or the free fly or both, um, as you have to put in a little Cody thing. Again, details down below. Alpha 3.5 hotfixes. So there have been various hotfixes to Alpha 3.5 over the last week or so um, for... Uh, fixing or helping to fix crashes with mining and general crashes on the servers, uh, mission and general bug fixes. They have been releasing updated versions on the PTU for testing, and then those have been going into the live build. So the latest PTU we had was 3.5.0Z, and that's just been absorbed into the live branch. They're not renaming the live branch to um, anything beyond 3.5.0 and then giving sort of like a patch number after it for the live builds, which is interesting. They're not really just hot fixes. Uh, these things, they, they are uh, something that required a client update, um, which is interesting, but obviously I suspect they're saving the 3.5.1 sort of named patch for when they get the 300 series variants um, together and potentially some more fixes as well. There are still some problems with the 3.5 live branch, definitely. And the major issues for me being when servers get to over 45 players, that they really start to struggle with performance and then the AI degrades heavily as well. It's not ideal. And there's lots of other stuff that they need to get sorted with combat and the flight model and, and lots and lots and lots and lots of little bug fixes, uh, which could all go into that branch and make it a lot better. Roadmap updates for the Persistent Universe and 3.6 bounty hunting mission NPC improvements was moved to 3.7. There was good progress on misfire system and weapon attachments this week. The uh, KNW Lumin V or Lumin 5 has been pulled from 3.7 into 3.6. However, the Animus missile launcher looks like it's been pushed to 3.7 now, which is a shame because I was very much looking forward to it in 3.6. For 3.8, there was some good progress on the Asperia Prowler as well. Squadron 42 updates. Chapter 3 and 10 for the uh, first episode of Squadron 42 are now complete white box playable. There are 12 chapters planned to have a phase complete during the second quarter of this year, mostly getting their white box playable and a phase done. And then a couple of them are getting their grey box phases finished and one uh, with their white box narrative. So a lot of progress potentially this quarter. Inside Star Citizen, let's do a quick summary and highlights of that. With the flight model, they sort of feel like they're hitting a lot closer to what the community wants now with their current revisions, though they're certainly not done yet. There's lots more work to do with that new flight model. They've completed concepts on a colorful extroverted clothing range for Microtech called ELD. Uh, it may use animated textures to display ship ads, news and economy information, but it's going to be very bright and sort of like um, very, very, very in your face club going where uh, we saw the Apocalypse Arms Animus missile launcher with some of its animations as well. They've been improving the scaling of natural features on planets and moons, pushing their current tech to support realistic looking valleys, canyons and craters at a massive scale. The Vanguard exterior is also getting reworked and we saw the landing gear for the ship 
um, that has been updated. They talked a little bit about the Banu Defender as well. It's the first Banu ship that we're going to have in game, and it's going to be in 3.6 at the moment. The interior is entirely new with a new pipeline, organics, flowing shapes, uh, and it's going to be used for the rest of the Banu lineup of ships in the future. In Star Citizen Live, which is the replacement for uh, Reverse the Verse, it's just renamed, but it does have some cool little features. This week, um, they interviewed Todd Pappy about 3.6 and some sort of like game design questions and stuff like that. So I'll highlight some of the bits there. It was quite in depth. If you want to see the full summary of it, check out my video from yesterday. I'll put that in the description below. They are working out what laws will apply in the Stanton system and what exactly constitutes a law. They are aware that missions aren't paying out enough and they're working on their balance. There's going to be interesting events um, that might happen to you during quantum travel in the future. And um, this could be like distress signals, anomalies, exploration, points of interest, risk of attack, uh, interdiction. You might have to do repairs and maintenance. They want the travel times while you're in quantum travel to be meaningful and there be things for players to do. So it's not just constantly boring or anything like that. There's going to be lots of missions that you might be able to do in the future. Lots of cool little contacts and uh, things that will entice you to come out of quantum travel rather than force you necessarily. Uh, player Gariables 2.0 will expand on what can be picked up in the game, how it can be interacted with, uh, and they're also cleaning up animations and gripping uh, and that sort of stuff. The personal inner thought system will allow you to do various actions, emote, interact with items that you have on you. Uh, the personal inner thought system is currently on the backlog, though. Uh, weapon attachments is the customization of FPS weapons, including sights, barrels, underbarrel, magazine. And then there's going to be lots of different types of attachment for each of those. After the weapon attachments are done, they are going to be working on the multi-tool to give it some more functionality. Ship rentals are in 3.6 and they're going to allow players to try new ships for a period of time in the persistent universe. They haven't decided exactly how long rental periods are going to be and how they're going to work exactly yet. The misfire system in 3.6 will use WER to work out when your items will misfire or stop working briefly, that sort of stuff. You will need to repair your items every so often. Server meshing and server-side object container streaming is being worked on right now. Shareable missions are not part of 3.6. They do need to get some baseline bits and edge cases done first, and then they'll be able to get to shareable missions in the game. Customs areas as well will not be functional in 3.6. But we will have a deeper law system. We will have a black market, which they um, haven't really 100% talked exactly how it's going to work in 3.6 yet. Um, but the, the idea is that NPCs will be able to identify what goods are stolen or not, if they're in a stolen ship or whatever, and react appropriately. It does sound like there will be places to sell stolen uh, equipment, weapons, items, or maybe it's just going to be the narcotics and that sort of stuff that's going to be outlawed in certain areas. We'll have to wait and see. RSI subscribers have access to the Anvil Valkyrie throughout May, and this week's sneak peek was at a helmet that I believe is going to be flare for subscribers later this month. So a couple of things we're waiting on at the moment. We know that there's going to be some sort of tumbrel systems concept sale going on at some point, probably for some form of ground vehicle. But we don't know exactly when that's going to be. That could literally be next week. That could be in a month's time. We also are after those 300 series of ships. They are going to be going back on sale, um, reworked on the RSO website with some form of customization options for them, enabling you to potentially like change their color, maybe loadouts and that sort of stuff before you buy them. Again, we don't know exactly how that's going to work, but that's something we're waiting for. Both of those should be with us in the not too distant future. I mean, that could literally be next week for both of those, or as I said, in a month's time. Every month we have a ship giveaway on the channel for May 2019. It's for another Drake Corsair exploration ship donated in the name of the People's Radio. They are a 24 seven radio station providing music in the Verse News and in Law Commercials and are operated by the People's Alliance of Levski. To be in for a chance of winning that ship, be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month. Links to the People's Radio and more information on the giveaway in the description below. If you are looking for a gaming PC or to upgrade, then instead consider Shadow Cloud Gaming PCs, which leverage your internet connection and a data center to turn any device, your old PC, a phone, a tablet, um, a laptop, whatever, into a powerful Windows 10 game environment. It's subscription based so won't break the bank and is a fantastic alternative to buying your own PC. If you are looking for a VPN then I use NordVPN as well. It's mega cheap, allows me to upload, play games, browse with more security and privacy than I would otherwise have. 
For both of those, links are below and use the code BoardGamer to receive a discount on either. Board Gamer is supported by its community via Patreon, the YouTube join button, subscribe star, Twitch, direct donations, people throwing ships at me. A massive thank you to everyone that goes the extra mile to support me. It genuinely does help. Just like everything else, links are below for people that would like to get involved with that as well. But if you want to give feedback, there are details there that you can get onto my Discord, discord.gg forward slash board gamer or contact at boardgamer.co.uk if you want to send me an email. Just get in contact, give me feedback. Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you.